Oh, man. All right, guys, Coda Boy 32 here. Check it out. Today, we're doing a field review, range review. And we're backing it up here in a couple of minutes with the tabletop. We'll go over the exact details of this. And what are we talking about? This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Bull Army Radical 4.5, chambered in 40 caliber. All right, so before we get all into it, I'm going to explain to the reason why we're doing shooting 40 caliber. USPSA, IPSC, and all those other ones. Major power factor, uh, limited gun, uh, you shoot 40. If you're shooting nine millimeter, you're automatically going down to minor. You can shoot the same target the same way, but in 40 cal, you're gonna get a better score. Don't ask me why, but that's why, all right? So everybody's like, hey, why not 10 millimeter? Well, the, they don't shoot 10 millimeter in competition. But uh, uh, other than that, this thing does come in nine millimeter, uh, I think 38 super, and then one other one. We'll talk about that when we get back to the tabletop review. But I'm gonna tell you something. This is an absolute awesome firearm. As you can see right here, we've got serrations on the top, the side of the slide here, here, here. Adjustable rear sight. Ta -da. Beautiful fiber optic in the front. Full dust cover all the way across. And the front sight block. Watch that. That barrel and the front sight block are one and the same. And we'll take it down when we get back to the table so you can see the exact details. Ambidextrous controls, skeletonized hammer. Look at that beautiful thing. Adjustable trigger, plus you can change out the trigger shoe right here. Beautiful steel grip. Now, this thing's got a couple upgrades. Uh, they don't often come with the nitro pedal right here, and they often don't come with the steel grips with integrated pin grip safety. Look at that beautiful. This is brass, ladies and gentlemen, brass. Also, 17 round magazines, 120 millimeter mag, and the brass base plate. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Really, really nice. Look at that oversized mag release. This one works real good. I haven't had a chance to get one to fall out on me on this guy. But I will tell you this. I'm liking this pistol a whole lot. Look at that. Very, very pretty. Let's go ahead and pump some more rounds down range. I'm getting used to this thing. The return to zero. The balance of the slide is pretty good. The double taps, I'm enjoying that. Now on a competition gun, they don't normally lock back because you never want to run a competition gun dry. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so one of the cool things about this pistol, and I want to explain it to you, got the sun to go down a little bit. It's about 10 degrees cooler. The slide being in balance, along with the steel frame, what happens is this thing comes right back down to zero. To illustrate that, I want to go ahead and put the camera up so you can see the recoil and how it, well, affects hitting the target down range. How about that? Here we go. All right, so one of the things I want to show to you is how that recoil is mitigated with a perfectly balanced slide. That front sight block also helps. Here we go, double taps. That's a great illustration of what a perfectly balanced slide looks like. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Let's give you a first point of view on what these sights look like from behind. Now they are adjustable for both windage and elevation. That in itself is a pretty neat thing. Eh, not really. A lot of competition guns come with that stuff, but it did sound good. So one of the things you have to do, especially with like a 2011 competition gun, this is a, is a race machine. It's like a custom car that you take to the track. Uh, these rounds that I'm shooting are hand loads and they're loaded a little bit long. I think the overall length on these is 1.185, thanks to Pops Quest, who gave me that information. And we're loaded out at about 4.3 grains of tight group. Now, a lot of people will say, man, I don't want to have to reload or anything. But I'm pretty sure that somewhere down the line, somebody sells a factory load 
that's set up for 2011s. Now, previously I tried factory loads with this thing and it was having a little bit of issues and I knew exactly what the problem was. They weren't long enough to engage that feed ramp. But now this thing, she runs like a purring cat. Here we go. Woo. And again, race guns, they don't go to lock back. So you gotta get used to, in the transitions, you hit those reloads. Drop that mag out, just like that. These don't belong to me, so I'm not dropping them on the ground. Boom, just like this. Whew. A lot of fun. Whole lot of fun. Okay, so one of the things when I met these guys out at SHOT Show, I was really impressed with the trigger system. The triggers on these guys are tuned to the nth degree. The reset, the pull is unbelievable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at, look at that thing, isn't she pretty? Now look at that front sight block. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous how that works? Very, very nice. Let's go ahead and load up a magazine. And by the way, these are 165 grain. Pull it back, load it up. Now I'm gonna shoot strong hand just so I can pull the trigger and show you. So there's a little, <laughs> yeah. Not a lot of take up on those things and she will surprise you. But the whole thing is, is lighter the trigger, the better. Now this is not a carry gun by any means. So let's see if I can hit that target right there. Hold on. Uh, up, there it is. And I'm actually sitting over here. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and hit some of those targets here. Hold on one second. She's beautiful. I love that magwell. Look at the opening on that thing. Isn't it gorgeous? Now here's the thing. These grips are the steel grips. Normally are a lot more aggressive. The guy who owns these had these blasted down to give it a little bit of a smoother effect. Uh, I'm a rough kind of guy. <laughs> I like my grips. Uh, you're out there on the field. You're sweaty. I don't need to be having an opportunity to drop or mishandle this firearm. Do that one more time. That nitro fin, one of the things that I'm finding out is I have to keep that thing pressed in. Here we go. You notice that ejection pattern. Hopefully, you guys can see that. Uh, it does pretty well with this firearm. I'm pretty pleased. That load developed is not bad. Let's put some more ammo in this thing. I'm having a blast. <laughs> All right, we've only got a couple little things to discuss before we go back to the table. I hope you're enjoying the video. If you are, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, that front sight block, look at that thing. Like I said, one of the things that it does is it keeps that front sight, which would usually be attached to the slide itself. This is attached to the barrel, which on this case, this thing does not move. And we'll talk about that here in a few minutes. Here we go. Now watch the thing. Watch it as it, it does not, it does not go up and down. Here we go. See that? I, okay, I'm becoming a big fan of Bull Armory. She's running like a machine now, which is the way it should be. These guys, once you get them balanced out, they run like a champ. This thing's probably needing some little bit of uh, lubricant. Let's go ahead and hit a couple more of these targets. <laughs> uh, first of all, I just want to apologize to the gentleman who actually owns this firearm. I will clean it and take care of it. Just ask my good friend X-Ring how good I clean my firearm like a glove. She's running now, boys. This thing's, woo! <laughs> yes, sir. And we're out of ammo. All right, well that concludes the range test. Let's get on back to the table. About five minutes on the table. I'm gonna go through all the specific details in this guy and what it's all about. Beautiful trigger. We'll get the weight on that thing. We'll weigh the gun out. We'll go over some other things. It'll be a short time. 
Here we go. Stand by. All right, so we're sitting here on the review table, and I will tell you this, man. I had an absolute blast sitting out there and shooting this thing. Uh, shooting at steel is so much more fun and satisfying than just shooting at paper. And I tell you what, when the gun's running good, it makes for an awesome afternoon. So what we want to do, uh, you saw the shooting videos. Let's take a look at what is in the box. So you get a really nice container. Looks like this. You got a uh, pressure release valve right here. You have two locking points, one here and one here. Go ahead and open this thing up. I'm going to show you what's inside. So in the top of it, you're going to see you've got a couple packages. One being you've got a cleaning rod as well as a cleaning brush. Then you've got three additional springs. Now, it was running a 10-pound spring in there. And again, we were doing 165 grain, uh, what is it, extreme bullets with the uh, 4.3 grains of tight grip. Now, you've got an 11-pound spring, a 9-pound spring, and a 12-pound spring. And these are designed so you can set it up and run a specific load that you've developed or whatever else, but it makes it so you can detail the gun. Okay, another thing you get, you get the uh, owner's manual as well as some really cool stickers, and then they're all encapsulated in this bag right here. Now, here's what we got. The kit, this one specifically comes with three 120 millimeter magazines. Now, what does that mean? Some people don't know. Uh, that's the length. Uh, 140 is what I use with 9mm, holds 21 or more rounds. These particular magazines, 40 Smith & Wesson, holds 17 rounds. Now, beautiful little things. I love the brass base plates. That sets it apart from a bunch of other <laughs> pistols out there. Uh, and there she is, man. So let's do this. We're going to tear it down real quickly, take a look at it. Uh, she's still dirty, and we do have to provide a good cleaning for it before we send it back to Bull Armory. But I want to show you some of the really cool things about this guy and some of the details. Let's do some close-ups. Here we go. Stand by. Okay, so here's the pistol in all its glory. Now, one of the things I want to do before we get into taking it apart, let's go ahead and weigh it out. Now, I've seen this thing ship out with the box inside an Ipsic square box. And what that means is that it is set up for shooting IPSC, USPSA, and meets all the regulations as far as the size is concerned. Well, let's do this. I want to show you the weight without the magazine is 3 pounds, 2.7 ounces. We have one magazine in there, and it's 3 pounds, 6.6 6 ounces. Very cool. Another thing I want to show you before we do anything is I want to check the trigger pull because I will tell you this. These guys come out and they are tuned. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. Straight back. One pound, 11.4 ounces. Let's do that again. One pound, 3.4 ounces. <laughs> One more time. Right in the middle of the trigger. One pound, 4.6 ounces. So I guess we could say this thing is a little less than a pound and a half. Now, let's take a look at it. I know we did it out in the field, but what I want to show you is the trigger pull. Here is the take up, just a tad. You're going to put your pad of your finger on there. And now here's the reset. Here we go. That's a competition trigger right there, folks. That is beautiful. On occasion, I was doing the double taps, and I had them go pop up like that real quick on me. But what you have to do is really get accustomed to using the pistol all in all. We got double alpha uh, ambidextrous safety right there. Uh, nice skeletonized trigger with the serrations on the top of it. Again, we've got a pinned grip safety. As you can see, look at the grip on that thing. Absolutely beautiful. And I, you know what? I'm a real big fan of this brass. That's just a touch of class right there. And it performs. The only thing that I can say I don't like is that seam that runs all the way up and down here on the belly. Uh, not a big fan of that because you can actually feel it move, but I'm real sensitive that way. Uh, the safety, beautiful done. The mag release, as you can see. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if it's the nitro fin that keeps me from hitting that thing, but on my Atlas, I have a tendency to uh, start it off a couple times shooting and there not be 
a uh, magazine in the magwell, but I'm wondering just because that's got an extra long push to it, which is probably the reason you can see like there, watch. We've got adjustable rear sights, elevation and windage, beautiful little screws right there. The serrations on the slide are amazing. The dust cover, it actually does. You can order this thing with the Picatinny rail on the bottom. So let's go ahead and take this thing apart. Go ahead and pull, pull that out. That is the nitro fin. Go ahead and bring this out right here. As you can see, it does need to be nicely clean. You can see all the way down through there, the face of the hammer. Very nice. And you can get these things with a polymer grip or a steel grip. Now here's the cool part about these 2011s. I know that my Atlas has the same thing, but what you do in order to change the springs out, it's very, very simple. Let's just go ahead and get that out of here so we can see. But you're just going to push this up and this, what this does right here, there's a little mechanism. You press that up, drop it like that. And then this thing just comes right on out of there. And you can take your barrel out the face, the front, and there you go. Now you can see how that sight block is attached to the barrel. Beautiful. Now these are match grade barrels uh, made by the guys over there at uh, Bull Armory. There's the inside of the slide. Very nice. Very well done. To change the springs, very simple, very easy. All you got to do is you want to compress this bushing here and bring that out. And there you go. Nicely, it's nice when it's like this. There's no tools, uh, especially if you want to go out to the range and you're trying to tune the gun to react a certain way to certain pieces of ammunition. To reinstall it, all you do is this right here. You bring that back up, boom, just like that. Then all you do is you take your barrel, you're going to bring it back in, just like that. Bring that up. We're going to reinsert. Now you've got the barrel bushing thing, Jigabob, right there. <laughs> and bringing it back in, you're going to go ahead and bring, put this in place so that that is in alignment with the barrel. And all you got to do is you just push that up. And we got to get it seated. Push it up and bring it back. And there you go. Reinstalling it's just like any other 1911 or 2011. Bring it back in here like this. You're going to line your holes up like that. Perfect. Drop it in. Bring that back. And there you go. All right, guys, that's it. This is the Radical 5.4. Man, I said 4.5 so times in the damn video. I don't know what I was thinking. But anyway, this is a 5.4. It's got a 5.4 inch barrel, match grade. This thing was awesome. Uh, as far as accuracy is concerned, I don't have to worry about pistols because they're probably more accurate than I will ever be. I could have put this thing on the bench and we could have test for accuracy at that point. But honestly, when you got a pistol at this level, good shooters will be able to hit just about anything out there. And it also depends really on the ammo that you're using as well. So with that being said, guys, let me know what your thoughts are down below. I like the pistol. Uh, would I recommend it? Absolutely. The retail on this thing is about $34.99, which in the market for uh, 2011s, especially with a front sight block like that, that's a hell of a deal. Uh, Bull Armory uh, has a website. I can't tell you what it is, but it's Bull Armory such and such. You probably can get the rest of it. <laughs> but that being said, guys, if you like this video and you want to see some more of them, let me know. Let them know. Maybe they'll send me another pistol to do another review on. But we always end them like this. God bless America. God bless his men, women in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. Because freedom is not free. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe and have already done so. Y'all be good. It's Coda Boy 32. I am out. Boom.